Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to install Botocera onto a mini PC like this one, or any PC for that matter. One of the issues that we're going to solve today is that Botocera does not come with an installer, so normally you would have to pull the hard drive out of this PC, plug it into a different computer, install the operating system, and then put it back in. But what we're going to be doing is using a USB drive to install a live version of Linux so we can achieve that without having to pull the hard drive out of the computer. Sometimes this isn't that big of a deal, but if you're using something like a laptop where the hard drive is inaccessible, this could be a very good solution for you. So we're going to need a few things to get started. Um, obviously, we're going to need your computer that we want to install the operating system onto. I ended up going with a small form factor computer. Figured it would just kind of be nice if I'm planning on having it underneath my TV or something like that. So. I was kind of digging around on Amazon and I found all these renewed mini PCs, which are, in my opinion, a great deal. I went with the Dell Optiplex 3040. You can see that comes with a 6500T, 8 gigs of RAM, a 256 gigabyte SSD, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and it even comes with Windows. It also comes with the mouse and keyboard, which is kind of nice and all for right around 120 bucks is a really good deal in my opinion and it's going to work perfect for what I'm using it for so hey we'll take a shot and try it out. Uh, we're going to need a two USB flash drives actually. Uh, one of them needs to be at least four gigabytes and the other one uh, could be however big you want it to be. It really doesn't matter but just one of them needs to be at least four gigabytes. Um, the other things we're going to need are a keyboard, a mouse, and then we're also gonna need a monitor so we can plug this in while we're getting everything going. Let's get into it. The other thing that I forgot to mention is that we are going to need a separate computer where we can load all of these files onto the USB flash drives. Now that we got all of that out of the way, we're gonna to need to download a couple things. The first thing we are going to get is Ubuntu. So just go into whatever search engine that you're using and type that in. We're gonna click on the very first one here, ubuntu.com. At the top, we're going to find the download drop-down menu. We're going to find Ubuntu Desktop, and then we're going to get 22.04 LTS. And once you click on that, it should just start automatically. If it doesn't, you can see that you can click this Download Now button. I already have all of these downloaded, so I'm just going to cancel these. But if you don't, you should be hitting Save. The next thing we're going to get is Bolina Etcher. Same thing for this. We're just going to search that. And the top one is bolina.io. Click download. And now for this one, we are going to need two versions. The first version that we're going to get is the Windows installer, and that's going to be for our main PC that we're using right now. Again, I already have this installed, so I'm just going to get cancel. And the other version we're going to need is going to be for the live version of Ubuntu that we're going to be running. So you're going to want to get the Etcher for Linux x64 app image. And lastly, we're going to download Botocera. This is the operating system that we're going to be using to play retro video games. So again, we're going to click on the very top link, botocera.org. We're going to hit that download button at the top, and we're going for the 64-bit version again. We'll just hit that direct link. Again, I already have it downloaded. All right, now that we have all of that, uh, we're going to take a quick little break here, let all this stuff download, and we will move on to writing all of this stuff onto these USB drives. Okay, so I just made a folder on my desktop, and I placed all of the downloads in there. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is install Bolina Etcher, and we're going to be looking for the .exe file first. So I already have this installed. You're just going to want to agree and go through all of these prompts. And once you have that installed, it should look something like this. And now you're going to want to make sure that we have that 4 gigabyte flash drive plugged in that we're going to be using to write Ubuntu to the flash drive. You're going to want to make sure that you don't have anything important on there because we are going to be deleting this in the process of flashing the USB drive. We're going to hit the flash from file button. Navigate to wherever you have this Ubuntu image downloaded and we're going to hit open. And now 
select the target, and this is going to be our 4 gigabyte flash drive. You can see we have this general U-Disk USB device, which is 4 gigabytes. So that is what we are going to use. Just make sure you're not picking any uh, system drives here. Looks good to me. All right, and now we're going to hit flash. We're going to hit yes. So that'll take a few minutes to install. The one thing I wanted to mention is that once this does complete, you will probably get three or four windows that pop up asking you if you want to reformat the drive. We definitely don't want to do that because that will delete everything that we just did. Um, so we're just going to try to close all of those. I just wanted to mention it because if you've never done this before, it can be kind of alarming. We're just about done here. Let's see if we get those pop-up windows that I was just mentioning. Right. Hey, it looks like we didn't. All right. I just wanted to reiterate that if you do get pop-up windows or anything like that, you can just close them. Like I said, it happened to me before. Um, it didn't this time for whatever reason. And the other thing that you can check is your USB drive should not show up anymore when you look at your local devices. Uh, this is totally normal and that's a good thing. Uh, now we can move on to the easier part, which is just copying these files over to our other USB drive. We're gonna have to swap out our USB drive, so pull out the one we just wrote Ubuntu onto and make sure you got that labeled or something like that so we know which one's which, and then plug in your second flash drive. And then we're just gonna navigate on over to it. And then we gotta copy two files over. We're gonna go for the Bellina Etcher app image and also the Bato Sarah image. Just drag and drop. And that might take a couple seconds. Okay, now that that is written on there, we can go ahead and eject that flash drive. And now we can move on to the fun part. Okay, so we have the mini PC booted up for the first time on this monitor here. Um, there are a couple of prerequisites that we need to take care of before we can get Ubuntu to boot off of this USB drive. The first thing that we need to do is head on into the BIOS menu. So we're gonna need to shut down the computer. And for me, I have to press F2 on boot in order to get into the BIOS menu. Depending on the machine, it might be a different key. Uh, if you're having troubles here, you may need to look it up. So the computer's off. Now what we need to do is turn it on and then press the F2 key or whichever key you need to press while it's booting. Now we are in the BIOS menu. There are a couple things we need to change here. Um, Yours may look totally different than mine, and you might not even be able to use your mouse in here, just the arrow keys on your keyboard. Um, but the settings sh should be the same, or they should be something very similar. Uh, the first thing we'll find here is up in the boot sequence uh, menu for me, uh, where you want to make sure that we have UEFI boot enabled. And the second thing that we're going to look for is called secure boot. Uh, and we want to make sure that that is disabled. Those two settings will allow us to boot the live version of Ubuntu from the USB drive. Once you have both of those things changed, you're going to want to hit apply. I already have mine set, um, and then we're just going to exit. Depending on what kind of BIOS you have, you're probably going to boot into Windows one last time before we can put this on here. So we're just going to exit, boot into Windows, and then shut down our computer. The computer is off. The next thing we are gonna to need to do is plug in the Ubuntu USB flash drive. So now for me, I have to launch into the boot manager so I can select to boot from that. You might be able to select that in the BIOS, but um, for me, I'm gonna to have to press F12 when we boot. So I'm gonna turn the computer on and do that. Okay, so I ran into an issue. I could not get it to boot from the USB drive. Um, I still have it plugged in and we're back in the BIOS and now you can see in the boot sequence menu, we can actually change it from Windows Boot Manager to our USB um, device as the first option. So we're gonna set that and apply and now we can save.
Now that everything is saved, we can exit and it should boot off of our USB drive. This next part can be a little bit intimidating if you've never used Linux before, but uh, don't worry, I will walk you right through it and it should be easy peasy. Okay, so now we have the main uh, Ubuntu installer menu up, um, but at the very top of the menu, you can see try or install Ubuntu. So after you hit try or install, it's gonna take a second to load here. As you can see, this can take a while, but uh, don't be worried. This is what it usually does. Just let it sit until it boots up. All right, now you can see we have a little loading wheel. Oh, just disappeared. Okay, so now we are loaded into the installer here. Um, it is very important that we do not install Ubuntu. We just want to use the live version. So I'm not even gonna hit try. I'm just gonna exit out of this window. It'll ask you if you really wanna quit. We're gonna hit quit. Now it should go black and we should launch into the Ubuntu desktop. And this will be a live version of the OS running off of this USB drive, which in my opinion is super cool. So now we need to take our second USB drive that we have our files onto and we need to plug this into the computer. All right, we have the USB disk plugged in. Now that we're booted up into the Ubuntu desktop, we need to do a few more things. Uh, the first thing we're gonna need to do is find the USB drive that we just plugged in. So we're gonna head on over to the files section. At the bottom, we can see that we have USB disk and you can see our two files. So now we need to get these onto the Ubuntu system. So we're going to highlight both of them right click, copy, and now for this tutorial, I'm just gonna put them in the downloads folder, but you could put these anywhere. We're going to go into here and hit paste. And now you can see a little progress tracker up at the top of the window here, and this will take just a couple seconds to complete. All right, you can see both of the files are copied over now. Uh, with Bolina Etcher, we're gonna to wanna to right click on it, go to properties, and on the permission side, we're going to want to make sure that the checkbox for allow executing file as program is checked. Now, when you try to open this by double clicking, nothing will happen. It's actually kind of a known issue that Bolina Etcher will not work with the current version of Ubuntu. So we do need to enter a couple of commands in the terminal and I don't let that scare you. It's very easy, they're short. I will show you exactly what to do. So in the bottom left of the desktop, you're gonna see show applications. We're gonna to wanna to find the terminal here in the middle. All right, one thing to mention is that we will need to be connected to the internet for this to work. So I just have an ethernet cable plugged into my mini PC. The first command that we need to type in is sudo add apt repository universe. Okay, make sure you have everything typed in correctly and hit enter. Hit enter again. All right, now we need to type in the second command, which is sudo apt get install libfuse2. Enter. All right, so now that is complete, we should be able to get Bolina Etcher working, I hope. Nice, now that Bolina Etcher is up and running, we need to do one more thing before we can actually flash the main drive of this computer. So for now, we're just gonna exit out of this. Now in the bottom left again, we're gonna hit show applications. And in this folder that's called utilities, we're gonna wanna click on that. We're gonna wanna click on disks. And now we wanna find the main hard drive of this computer. So for me, it's the 256 gigabyte disk. 
and we're going to delete all of these partitions that we don't need. I'm going to delete all of these. The one that you can keep is the WinRE, which is your Windows recovery. If you keep this on here, you can recover Windows onto this if you end up uh, not wanting to use it for whatever you're using it for in the future. I'm going to keep that on there, but uh, that's entirely up to you. So to delete these partitions, we're just going to highlight it and then click the red button on the right side. Now we are going to create a new partition and we'll do 256 gigabytes. And we don't need to worry about the volume name. And for the type, we are going to select other. And we are going to do no file system. And create. So now we just have a big empty partition and we can exit out of this window. Okay. So now we're going to want to open back up Belina Etcher. Now that that is open, we are going to hit flash from file. We want to make sure that we have Botocera selected and in the top right we hit open. Now we're going to want to select a target. And since this is one of our system drives, we're going to have to hit show one hidden. And we're going to check that. And this is our 256 gigabyte SSD, the main drive for the computer. And you can see it says system drive. And now you're going to get a little yellow warning sign, but this is the drive that we want, so we can be certain to press the flash button. We're going to get another warning, and we're going to hit yes, I'm sure. Now we will just wait a few minutes for this to complete. All right, so you can see that the flashing is complete. So now we can close out of Belina Etcher. We can close our window. Unplug our additional USB drive from the computer, not the one with Ubuntu on it. In the top right corner of the desktop, you can see a power button. We're going to hit that, and we're just going to hit power off. So now it's telling us to remove the installation media and press enter. So we're going to pull the USB drive out. We're going to hit enter on the keyboard. Now the computer is powered off. We have both of our flash drives removed from the PC. Now we're going to cross our fingers and turn it on for the first time. The top left we can see it says booting botocera.linux. So future me here, I found out that I didn't have the settings right in the BIOS. I was just stuck in a boot loop when I was trying to boot into Botocera. So we need to go back into the boot sequence and change our SSD as the uh, first option here. And we're going to need to make sure that legacy boot is enabled. And like I said, just make sure that that is up at the top. And we want to apply and save everything and exit. Okay, and as you can see, that fixed everything, and we are actually booting into Botocera now. You can hear the intro music coming from the horrible speaker on the mini PC, but pretty cool that we just got everything working. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. That's the end of this video. Uh, it was actually my first video, so if you liked it, let me know in the comments and maybe even give it a like or possibly even subscribe. Maybe I'll make another one. Who knows?